here in New Hampshire with the first in the nation primary, presidential elections automatically take a lot of the headlines. But there is a wide open race for the corner office at the State House. Democrats and Republicans both holding wide open primaries. One of the Democratic candidates for governor is joining this morning on Close Up, Executive Counselor Cindy Warmington. Thanks for being here, Counselor. It's a pleasure to be here. So this might be the first time uh, some of our viewers are seeing or hearing from you at all. So tell us a little bit about who you are and why you're running for governor. Well, I'm Cindy Warmington. I'm currently the executive counselor for District 2, and I'm in my second term there. Before uh, assuming the position of executive counselor, I was uh, worked in health care for 40 years. I raised my two children in Guilford, New Hampshire, and, uh, and I have uh, been a health care advocate my entire life. Uh, why should Democrats choose you over the, your opponent in this race? Joyce Craig. Well, I have been it, it, on the executive council for three years, and uh, during that time, I see where all of the money goes in our state. I work with our legislature, I work with the governor, I work with the executive council, and I work with every commissioner in state government. And I think a lot of people don't know this, but I represent 3,000 square miles of our state, and anytime anyone has a problem with state government, they can call their executive council, and they do, and then I coordinate with commissioners uh, to make government work for the people of New Hampshire. I know the issues in our state from north to south, big towns, small towns, uh, from fishermen to farmers and firefighters, students, teachers, parents. Uh, I know the issue statewide, not just a portion of our state. I've represented cities and towns from eight out of our 10 counties. I really know our state and I know how to make government work for our state. Obviously there's a contrast there in terms of the different kinds of service, but do you believe Mayor Craig is responsible to any extent for the problems that are here in Manchester or is this more of state issues that are driven down to the local level? You know, I think all candidates, all of us, are going to have to stand on and answer for our record. Uh, I know that on my record that I have served the state of New Hampshire for the last three years exec of, as executive counselor. I understand the state issues. We have been working very hard on the executive council to make sure we support our cities and towns. And I think that we let um, we believe in local government and um, we let local people solve the problems locally and give them the flexibility to do that. One of the big uh, points of your campaign is that you've been at the tip of the spear on reproductive rights at the Executive Council. We'll get to more on that in a moment. You face some early scrutiny in this race for your past lobbying on behalf of Purdue Pharma, makers of OxyContin. Uh, given what's unfolded over the last 20 years since you were doing that work, do you regret at all that advocacy? You know, um, Adam, that work was more than 20 years ago when we did not know the extent of the fraud and the lies that Purdue Pharma was perpetuating on our medical community and the harm that they would cause to so many. Uh, this opioid crisis has affected so many families, including my own uh, extended family. And, you know, this is not a, an issue about what happened 20 years ago. This is con what our concern is, is what is the crisis that we're facing right now and who is best equipped to handle that? For more than 20 years, both in as a healthcare, uh, when I was in healthcare and as executive counselor, I have worked to expand access to substance use disorder treatment, to mental health treatment. I have served on the boards of multiple mental health centers and substance use disorder treatment centers. I know how to tackle this problem, and I'm ready to do that as governor. But do you regret the advocacy, though? Well, certainly. If, you, if we knew then what we knew then, if I'd known then what I learned later about the extent of the lies and the fraud, um, of course um, I would not have, I would have done things differently. And some make the argument, I mean, there were people who were sounding the alarm that early. I mean, the, essentially OxyContin was being abused in many different places. Were there some red flags for you even at the time? Did you question what you were being told? Um, the extent of the fraud um, really wasn't um, known to me or to others at that time. Um, I think that if it had been, we wouldn't have had the opioid crisis many years later that occurred as a result of that. Uh, so uh, again, um, we didn't know that at 20 years ago. I think the real question is, who is the person that's equipped to handle this problem now? Right alongside the opioid crisis in New Hampshire, we've also had a child protection crisis, arguably. Uh, the state has failed far too many kids, whether subjecting them to torture and abuse at YDC, or uh, kids being failed by DCYF being placed back in homes where they were eventually beaten to death. You know, Democrats 
want to spend millions of dollars on connecting rail to Boston. Wouldn't that money be better spent overhauling DCYF and making sure problems like this stop forever? You know, I think I am a strong advocate, and you have seen this at the council table, to making sure that we are protecting the most vulnerable populations in our society, and children are at the forefront of that. And we have, in many cases, failed our children. You saw the questioning that I put to the Department of Health and Human Services regarding uh, those children that were placed in that Tennessee facility. Uh, we need to make sure that we are serving our, the children of our state. Do we have multiple priorities that we can serve? We're going to build a budget that will serve the uh, that is responsible and will serve the needs of of the people of New Hampshire. Also, on the issue of kids, you've got education freedom accounts. What's going to happen if you're the governor? Are you pushing for a full repeal, or will the kids who have those EFAs be able to keep them? Taxpayer dollars belong invested in our public schools, and we need to make sure that 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 we are making sure that we can offer every single child in New Hampshire a great education the way I had a great education. I came from um, public education. Uh, I was able to uh, go to college. I had to work my way through um, and to work two part-time jobs to go to college. I was able uh, to uh, benefit from a public education. We need to make sure that we are able to offer a public education to all our students, and that means taxpayer dollars go to our public schools. If a child is thriving, though, in that private setting, you're going to say, hey, back to public school where you weren't doing so well. Well, I'm not going to say that. Parents always have a choice to make. Uh, we, don't, um, we don't take taxpayer dollars to subsidize private schools. On abortion, we would be pushing for a full repeal of the 24-week uh, ban? Absolutely. This ban is dangerous to the women of our state, and it is a threat to the providers of our state. It undermines our entire maternal health care system. This ban needs to be repealed and replaced with a protection to access safe and legal abortion in our state. We often get into discussions here that end up in these theoretical situations about abortions later in pregnancy and things like that. I'm just curious. We're told that abortions that are elective don't happen later in pregnancy. So if that's the case, why do they have to be legal? Um, they don't happen. That is a, uh, a complete misnomer that is put out by Republican extremists intended to distract us from the danger of this abortion ban. What does happen is there are complications in pregnancies. Those are tragedies. They are sometimes emergency situations. And we don't want our doctors thinking they need to consult with their lawyer before they deliver the kind of health care that women need. These, this ban is a threat to the health and safety of the women of our state. It also is a threat to our maternal fetal health care system because it sets up a situation where doctors, providers don't want to come to our state. And so we need to ban uh, this abortion ban completely. Do you have any specific or new ideas to make housing more affordable for Granite Staters? I think that there is a multi-pronged uh, approach to solving the housing crisis in our state. Um, the first thing I would say is that we need to put somebody in state government who is actually accountable for how many units of housing we have in our state. And then we need to look at all of the various options as I am talking to developers around the state and really saying to them, what's it going to take? Why aren't you building housing? And they're telling me zoning restrictions are the biggest obstacle for housing. We really need to look at the incentives we're putting in place to, um, to lift those zoning requirements. And, and I think this might be new. I want to change the narrative around this. This shouldn't be a not in my backyard situation. This should be the people that we are keeping out of our state are our children and our grandchildren. They're the ones who can't afford to stay and live in our state and raise their families. Quickly as we wrap up here, I want to touch on something about COVID. We're seeing cases rise again. If you're the governor and there's another respiratory illness that's reaching pandemic levels and doctors say it's time to mask up again, would you be calling for a mask requirement? We're going to take those decisions as they come to us and rely on the advice of uh, public health authorities in making those decisions. That's the right thing to do as governor. All right. Executive Council Cindy Warmington, running for governor. Thanks for joining us here on Close Up. We appreciate the time. Thank you for having me. All right.